Hello, beautiful beings. This is Maruma Tu, and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology. And this is a daily planetary translation for July the 16th. 2017 and just as a reminder if you haven't caught the dailies this week I have launched sunsoulastrology.com it will be listed in the show more section of this video that is where you will go ahead and book any personal readings coachings and or education with me education is something that is coming soon it's not exactly available just yet but it is in the works Thank you to one of my fantastic students who is very patient with me and working with me on this. So I'm very grateful, Richie, you know who you are. Big up yourself. Now, today the collective sun is at 25 degrees of Cancer and is 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is gonna be 1 a.m. on the 17th Universal Time. The moon is going to be conjuncting Uranus and Aries. The moon will be at 27 degrees at this time and Uranus is at 28. So this is basically just happening exactly at that moment that the fruition of the power is gonna be very strong. Now, anytime that we talk about Uranus, Uranus is the natural ruler of Aquarius. And Aquarius and Uranus are the natural rulers of the 11th house of the Zodiac and its natural falling. What this means to us on a mundane level is that it's talking about our humanitarian aspects and it's also talking about our communities and how we involve ourselves in groups that are geared towards bettering humanity. Now, the flip side, quantum astrology, Aquarius is the quantum realm itself. It is dark matter itself. And it is the place where we have these genius thoughts flood into our minds and our nervous system, really plug in, give us a futuristic type of view of the world and allows us to go ahead and start jumping timelines instantaneous. That's the thing about Uranus as a planet. It's represented by lightning striking and it's just that fast. It comes out of the blue and it's gone faster than you can know that it ever happened. But the effects of what occurred are long lasting. And that's what Uranus is here to do. Uranus is here to constantly push us forward and make us very genuinely authentic in a alternative type of way. Uranus, as we've talked about earlier this week, is also that planet that likes to shock and surprise. So it is still in a square to Mars and the square is getting stronger by the minute. The moon is in an exact square here because Mars is at 27 degrees of Cancer and one degree of orb whenever it comes to the square of Uranus and Mars. So if we can look at it from the perspective of now the Mars and Uranus coming together, sharing space, becoming one energy, this is geared into our emotional realm. Everything that has to do with the elements of the moon. The elements of the moon are our intuitions, our psychic connection, our cosmic lineage, it is how we vibrate and project into this known universe. We are on this feedback loop. We are connected by vibration to every single person. So right now, our transmission of our emotions, our vibrations, whether they're in the positive or the negative category, are really being broadcast on a much louder channel, a much far reaching channel, and a channel that already has a lot of static. And the static is because it's tuned to a higher frequency. Uranus is a very, very high frequency. It is the oversoul of Mercury, and Mercury is the one that represents that channeled message from source, the interconnectedness between the etheric and the physical. So we have to have mind, and we have to have energy, and we have to be tuned in in order to receive the messages that are coming from our actual originating origins which is the cosmos itself and the oneness consciousness of creator source. It, we all disperse back into an energetic form 
only to re-emerge as another physical entity possibly or you know half and half light body that can actually um, materialize in the physical and then once again go back into spirit and man you know it's something that we do every day all day long we just don't really get it from that aspect we all know that our cells are vibrating and oscillating actually at such a high frequency that we are blipping in and out of multiple dimensions at a rate that makes us seem and feel solid and made of matter even though it's such an illusion and it's such a crazy trip so these two planets uranus and the moon having this connected energy and being in this very strong square to mars and right next to mars right is 25 degrees of cancer where the sun is transiting so the sun is definitely getting closer to mars again this combust energy is starting to really get stronger again and we are having um this meeting right anytime the moon and the sun square one another it's about are we balanced internally with what we are expressing externally the sun is always representing our ego and in a good way our ego is our identification of who we are and this is so important to hold on to at all times like don't ever try to kill your ego if you kill your ego you kill yourself and you don't know who the hell you are you don't have any personal um qualities right because it's like if you kill that ego you're finishing who you are as a being we're all here representing the same spark that's really what we need to connect into we are all part of the same creation story no matter what star seed location we come from no matter if we're a walk-in like myself it doesn't matter at the end of the day what matters is the underlying truth and truth should be that bonding glue inspiration should be that bonding glue to go ahead and shine your light so we are going to be having a, a look at how we're shining our light now um what i really want to mention about uranus as well and the moon here being in the sign of aries we did touch on it yesterday a bit but it is about the i am that i am that first house that represents aries is the quantum self the I am that I am that has come into this incarnation to really live a very destined life with a specific message encoded to unlock at a certain time. A lot of people are unlocking right now because of all of the starseed activations that have happened with all of these planets moving through the direct locations. We went through the Pleiades, we went through Orion. We've, we're going through Sirius right now. We hit the exact conjunction when it was at 13, 14 degrees. It activated Vega because it opposed it. Now with Pluto, Pluto has actually taken one step backwards in its retrograde to 17 degrees. So it is now in a two degree orb to Vega in the sign of Capricorn. Now Vega is a fixed star. So if you look in your own personal chart, you're gonna see vega at 15 degrees of capricorn for everybody what you want to do is look and see if you have any personal planets or planets in general if you have your ac your dc your mc your ic um and your north node or your south node here that's a star seed origin anytime your south node just as a heads up actually conjuncts a star seed location within two degrees that means that you're actually a master soul from that location so that's always something fun to kind of check out and see in your natal chart because these are your soul's jewels of information. Your soul gave you the ability to learn your astrology and find out where you're from, not just in this earthly incarnation, has really paved a way for us to not question our value and our worth and our sanity right because a lot of times whenever we're so tapped in and we're receiving such divine messages from source it can seem really out there and a lot of people in our lives can absolutely go the extra mile and call us crazy call us you know um a out there thinker tell us that our head is always stuck in the clouds and that we need to gain some realistic stability but again who says and who's defining these terms and this is what we're really meant to question. 
because again with that Aries sign and putting the rebellious authentic planet in it it's like we don't have an option right now other than to be true to ourselves, right true to our authenticity there's just so many elements involved in this particular conjunction because of course that means that the moon joins the original grand fire trine that now the moon and uranus are both in a trine to mercury at 18 degrees of leo today and the south node 24 degrees of leo both of those are in a trine to saturn retrograde at 22 degrees and 22 minutes of sagittarius oddly enough saturn at 22 degrees and venus at 13 degrees of gemini you know gemini and sagittarius are the 180 opposite of the same coin they oppose each other now venus stepping up into this nine degree orb is considered opposite of saturn this is once again we've been talking about this echo this echo from whenever venus squared saturn now it's venus opposed saturn meanwhile it's also in a trine to jupiter jupiter is at 15 degrees of libra so there's this trine of happy expanded love and this communication about love. Anytime we include Gemini in the equation, we're talking about communication. And we're also talking about the interconnected channeled messages. So putting Venus there is tapping us into our value and our worth of receiving these messages, knowing that you are worthy of, of hearing them and that the message that you're getting from them is something to trust because again, that's what Jupiter has taught us so strongly lately is to seek that inner voice, which comes through those channeled messages and to really trust it. Seek your own truth, trust the truth that you discover. Venus is giving us the ability to make that happen. And Saturn's like, hey, did you pay attention? Are you really moving forward in the direction that you decided to whenever Venus again met up with Chiron? This has been an ongoing conversation that I've been having with you all for the last few days because it's just a very strong aspect. This actually forms a mutable T-square because as we know, Venus has been in a square to Neptune and in the next day or two, it'll be exact 14 degrees whenever Venus hits that and Neptune at 14 degrees. It's, you know, like I said yesterday, it's not a strong square to Saturn, right? So it's not 100% a mutable t-square but it's saying something to us right now it's really saying like this is an underlying energy don't be fooled don't be um dismissive of this because it is a checkpoint we we've definitely made sure that we're aware of this fact and we don't want to lose sight of that right because these are whenever the lessons that seem you know it's like it's almost like we get ready for something and then it doesn't happen and it just waits long enough for us to forget about that lesson and then boom, it enacts it. And we're like, oh shit, kind of caught off guard. But if we can continue to keep it in the back of our minds that this integrity is not going anywhere, this is the new normal, right? To operate from a place of spiritual integrity and always take into consideration your wisdom always practice discipline in all areas of your life right now we're getting a crash course on how to be disciplined in our relationships while healing our chiron wound and that's not always the easiest thing to do because it's usually relationships that cause us to have a wound either it is making us question our self-identity if chiron's in your first house it's making us question our self-worth if it's in your second house. It's making us get over some stumbling blocks with communication in your third house. Readjusting family and home, throwing off the routine of it if it's in your fourth house. You know, blocking your creativity and or expanding it and your ideas of love with the fifth house. And it just keeps on going on and on. If love and relationship comes in, you have Chiron in your sixth house and it totally fucks up your daily routine, then that is going to be a hard lesson that you're going to have to learn. So look at where Chiron is at in your natal chart. Look at where Saturn is at in your natal chart and look at where Venus is, 
right now this message is coming from the universe is saying take a look at the signs take a look at the houses and start to understand your own message from creator source we're getting this message that we need to have loving communication that we need to trust ourselves and our truth and practice the discipline wisdom and integrity in our relationships and don't forget about ourselves continue to heal continue to set time aside for yourself to meditate to do the things that make you special and who you are like do not relinquish your sovereignty just to be in a relationship if somebody doesn't value who you are then there's no need to be in it I'm very fortunate that I have someone in my life that totally supports what I do and they're also a major player on the world stage so there's no um, issue with either of us holding the other back it's it's free reign to be happy do what you do spend as much time as you need to cultivating that because you know what at the end of the day this is us building our empires on an individual basis that are going to be there for the long haul whenever we can actually come together get everything up get everything going really get firm in your foundations and then whenever the time comes there is going to be a relaxation period but you kind of have to grind hard you kind of have to set everything in motion and you have to put your priorities in the proper places so as long as you are communicating about this you know what's going on there is no behind the back or in the dark kind of shade then it's absolutely like freedom to go ahead and have loving relationships and have a loving relationship with yourself and also build your empire like we were just talking about. So lots of powerful things happening. The yod that is actually not there anymore. No, it is. I apologize. <laughs> Saturn at 22 degrees, sextiling the south node at 24 degrees of Aquarius. Both of those are in quincunxes to Mars and the sun. So again, how are we going to integrate the passions and desires of our sun illuminating who we are with all of this energy coming from Saturn getting the rewrite going you know went through the galactic center and it's a, going to go direct and move back through the galactic center once again so what sort of things do we want to bring from our past incarnations that are very fruitful we're igniting those right now and whenever Saturn moves direct it's going to be full steam ahead. We're not going to be having, I guess what I want to say is like such an easy time. Saturn retrograde is an easier time than most, especially if you are on the right path. So always good to keep in mind that we're looking for new ways to integrate and to begin something much more dynamic with a great foundation that has already been cultivated from many past incarnations. So getting into the degree of the sun today at 25 degrees of Cancer is a flock of penguins on an icy beach. Inward purpose draws itself an invisible community of those who are dedicated to the far places together. Your subtle support system recognizes actuality that you are bearing gifts of a high and free kind and attempting to bring these through in just the right way. A guiding stream accompanies your very life pulse, steers you towards staying faithful and not pushing too hard too fast. A timeless future infused sphere, vast and expansive and truly unlimited. Become the personification of the otherness by being inwardly there within it and outwardly silent and poised and cool. There shall be chances, opportunities, ritual occasions for bringing the greater worlds to bear upon the basic shared life stream. And at all other times, preparation and ripening are in order to be perfectly ready when called upon. Clear, steady, and super true. Super dope. Um, <laughs> Definitely a great expression of the moon in the conjunction to Uranus and the sign of Aries today because that's what this first sentence is really talking about. And the moon is the natural ruler of Cancer. So the fact that Cancer is conjunct 
Uranus is very powerful, right? And all of that is in a square to the sun traveling through Cancer and Mars. All of the cardinal signs square one another and oppose, right? So opposite of Cancer is Capricorn and on either side is Aries and Libra. So all, same with all of them, you know? So same with the mutables. Now, inward purpose draws itself an invisible community of those who are dedicated to far places together. This is exactly the quantum realm. This is what that Uranus is talking about, that we are tapped into this invisible community, bringing that humanitarian aspect, the building of communities. It doesn't always have to be in the physical flesh because we are connected once again. So I moved through the quantum realm to connect with people out there in this universe that our vibrational frequency match to the message that I present so that whenever people stumble across my channel, it's faded, it's meant to be. And we then jump into a harmonic resonance and we start to build, you know, because we're dedicated to this far place together. And you all know exactly how that works because you've experienced it from the other side. You and I here is not by coincidence or accident whatsoever. Your subtle support system recognizes actuality that you are bringing gifts of a higher and free kind and attempting to bring these through in just the right way. And I cry sometimes from joy about how this is actually recognized. You as the viewer, when you reach out to me and you tell me your stories and how I wind up channeling you every day, and how I speak your actual words into manifested experience and it just blows your mind. It blows my mind too. And this is the side effect that that subtle support system recognizes that actuality that you are bearing the gifts of the highest and free kind and attempting to bring these through in the right way. And that's exactly what Sun Soul Astrology is. It is bearing gifts of the high and free kind. You tune in every day, complimentary, and that is how it should be. I'm always going to be here to share with you, and it's a beautiful blessing that you all, you know, love and trust me enough to then book a reading with me where I take it quantum and we just go to the next level of your soul. And that's why I bring new and abstract charts so that we can continue to learn more, especially with the star seed. And that is something I wanted to mention. I'm so glad that I got on that track because I have brought back the Starseed Astrology readings. If you are unfamiliar, I've done these in the past and they are a lot of work. It's about a four plus hour process for me to make these um, charts for you and then spend the 45 minute meeting that I have. So I have increased the price and it is on sunsoulastrology.com you can take a look you can book it with me but it's absolutely profound and it's an extraordinary amount of information we talk for 45 minutes but at the same time i also send you a written report with all of your starseed information that can equal up to 20 pages long so check it out if you are interested but a guiding stream accompanies your very life pulse and steers you towards staying faithful and not pushing too hard too fast now this is a good part to remember because of this square that we are having with neptune retrograde in the sign of pisces at home and also with excuse me venus in gemini so this is where we need to absolutely make sure that we are distinguishing between the dreams that are um, empty and the ones that can actually manifest into some really true abundance because Neptune retrograde, especially if you have it in your natal chart, it represents that you are attuned to the unconscious, that you are a super psychic person and that your channeled messages actually come whenever your mind is using a tool such as astrology, tarot, numerology, any of the modalities that basically keeps your conscious mind locked on a task where you yourself can go in a spirit and attune to the unconscious and basically just project those words out that are coming from divine source. So a lot of times we don't know what we're saying when we say it, but it's coming out and just really blowing people away because we're reading their soul. We're tuned into it. 
Right now, this is what all of it is. That's the karma of Neptune retrograde, is to really bring fruition to the right dreams. And that is the guiding stream that's accompanying your very life pulse and steers you towards staying faithful and not pushing too hard too fast. Because yes, these inspired ideas are coming out of nowhere. And that's also what Neptune represents as its own entity, is that you will get out of the blue thoughts, messages, and concepts and you now need to know okay so that's don't push too hard too fast evaluate that dream write it down start to work out the logistics is this real or is this fantasy because with neptune you always have to ask yourself that question a timeless faith a timeless future infused sphere vast and expansive and truly unlimited and again we're back to this uranus energy because it is timeless and future infused sphere this future infused sphere that we use to get there is uranus is this higher octave once again of oscillation of cells to spark our energetic quantum field which is our aura right but it's like we spark our aura and it surrounds us, but then if we can throw it into the quantum realm, it just goes, you know, and through the etheric and it actually can, it has no more boundaries and it has no more borders, but because you've sparked in multiple dimensions, you are layered with protection and the energy that you're putting out there is to connect. It's like you're putting out a hub for other beings on your vibration to then plug into and basically charge their battery from but in them charging their battery it recharges yours so it is secular once again it is the quantum feedback loop once again and if we're using it intentionally and with the right purpose the discipline the wisdom and the integrity pure heart pure intent then this is where we are really doing our freaking job and really moving into this expansive the vast and expansive and truly unlimited world of the quantum it's epic <laughs> become the personification of the otherness by being inwardly there within it and outwardly silent and poised and cool and yes okay so i share with you how i walk through the quantum realm because i don't need to share it with anyone else so i don't talk about it it's for you and it's for whenever we work one-on-one -on -one to hone these skills becoming the personification of the otherness learning how to walk through it learning how to connect but by being inwardly there within because this does not happen externally this is the external result this is like a gateway youtube you and me daily astrology quantum the actual real stuff that's happening is totally behind the veil. You know, I'm an eighth house Scorpio sun with Mercury also there in Scorpio in the eighth house, 12th house Pisces moon with Pisces Mars, 12th house also. And my Uranus at 29 degrees of Aquarius. All my house cusps are 29 degrees. So that's the 11th, 12th house cusp and it's right there. So I express this, right? And just as an example, that's how you can see it manifest in people, but it's the understanding that it happens behind the veil, that it connects through the only true reality that there actually is. And then outwardly, we don't have to tell everybody, right? This is what I do. So of course I do to you, but outside of that, no, 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 <laughs> no. But anyways, there shall be chances, opportunities, ritual occasions for bringing the greater world to bear upon the basic shared live stream. And if, yes, we are so doing that. We are getting these chances, these opportunities, these ritual occasions. And that is like the ending of each of the Mayan calendar marks that has been actually set to unlock our DNA so that we evolve at a faster rate. And when we're evolving at a faster rate, these thoughts that we have inside of our head, they manifest right now and they're manifesting every 28 days. So our technology and our consciousness and our spirituality, our love, our reform of this holographic matrix is happening every 28 days and it's becoming a very accelerated shared live stream where we are building, we're bringing the greater world to bear upon the basic 
And it's like the basic is going away. No more basic bitches and, you know, everything like that. We're going into higher octaves. End of story. And at other times, preparation and ripening are in order to be perfectly ready when called upon. Clear, steady, super true. The key to making it is absolutely being ready. So if you can understand that, that, you know, there are times when it's just preparation. There are times whenever it's testing. There's other times when it's just a checkpoint to see where you're at. And there's other times when it's just fucking beast mode on go mode. So remembering that that preparation and the ripening in order to be perfectly ready and steady and clear when you are called upon is of the utmost super true aspect. We, we, you know, it's like you can't wait for the spiritual awakening to happen if you yourself are not spiritually awakened or for the old world to be done if you are not fully unplugged from the old world. So this is that preparation and that ripening. We are being double checked on multiple aspects. There's a lot of underlying energy that's a little bit of a trickster and making sure that we have gone the full mile and that we have taken our time to prepare and to become ripe and ready in order because that moment is coming for each of us individually and all of us on a collective scale. So we don't have to look around and be like, "Is it, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Is it go time? Is it go time? Because you're gonna receive that signal direct to you whenever it is your time, not anybody else's. This is not a group ascension. This is an individual ascension occasion. The more lights that turn on, the brighter this universe gets, and the more they can follow that light in order to wake up on their own. But that's as much as we can do. So that's why it's so important to tap into that quantum realm. Really take advantage today of the moon meeting up with Uranus and communicating with those squares to the sun and Mars. And really bring this into to action and fruition. And if it is just really your time to go inward and retune, then go ahead and do that because attuning your frequencies and vibrations to that higher resonance is what's going to pull you up. Because of course you cannot ascend to a higher frequency, vibration, and dimension if you are resonant match to that lower vibration. If you match the frequency of the old world, that's where you're going to be until you start to match a new version. So if anything is a good motivator, I would say that that is 100% it because we definitely have some blessings and some gifts to reap and receive. We just can't skip the part where we do the work and then maintain it. Maintenance, 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 maintenance. So I will be back tomorrow. And again, sunsoulastrology.com is up and operational. And I love all of you so very much. Thank you for everybody who takes the time to watch these uh, daily reports and also who has liked and subscribed and shares comments every day. You're all very amazing. I have the best people in the world that comment. If you want some extra additional information, everybody who watches and comments is so intelligent and so true in the information that they bring and they actually take the time to contribute to my community because it's our community. It's like we are here and we realize and see ourselves as the same vibrational match and I'm just here being a representative for you. You are actually um, living through me right now and saying what you have to say. It's just coming out of my mouth. And so we are all here in this together. Everybody is super freaking welcome. And the ones that, you know, aren't, they won't even find my channel and they won't even have a conversation with us except for my occasional, you know, one hater that slips through the door, which I honestly love because it's not hate, it's jealousy. And it's, um, a undefined or unrefined form of flattery. And whenever we ascend, we realize that we don't have to hate. We get to commemorate and join in the goodness. So, you know, everybody's taking their steps. And I feel like even those that get through the door um, are meant to actually evolve to the place in which we've all come to. So it's a really beautiful thing either way. And again, I love you. I will see you tomorrow. Job bless.
Close your eyes Can you hear my voice? 